Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 53 of The Treat Show. So I have a special guest tonight that we will not be interviewing in depth because the time is not right, but we have Jason from Dark Horse. We're going to be smoking a blunt together. What? Well, not together. <laughs> I'm not a huge blunt guy. Nope. You got your little bowl. You got your little glass. One hitter. <laughs> Anyways, how is everybody doing in the chat? I feel like Grow the Mo, Big Farm, Left Field. Oh, you got the mouse. I feel like we know Joffrey's in there. This time I said that I would give a clone or genetics away to the first person that was in the chat. But your genetics? Well, I My mean, genetics. Who gets? Who's the first person in the chat? Well, you gotta scroll up. Uh, <laughs> Stutter. Stutter. Congratulations, Stutter. If you would like to get that was so nice. Thank you. If you would like to get <laughs> some genetics, I feel like I'll send you a list. I'll convince Dark Horse to put some options on there. <laughs> I guess you just got some free seeds, Stutter. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, well, how are you doing tonight, Jason? I'm pretty good. You're pretty good. I'm so excited because we are going to have a Dark Horse interview one day, and I've wanted to do it more than anyone. Nobody ever interviews me. I like it that way. It's not true. I do the interviewing. I'll interview you. <laughs> would you guys rather me interview her? I think that would be a better better treat show tonight. Everybody's bored of, bored of me. But <laughs> I feel like we're going to have Jason come on, I think, in two weeks. He doesn't even know. Okay, you're scheduling me now. Yeah. is I was thinking that we should cover the whole Bruce Banner story, which I know people have heard you talk about. But... We should touch on it, and we should talk about your journey from the beginning, because I hear some things. I hear... You'd have to have like a 12-hour podcast to hear me complain and cry about everything that I've been through. I will cry, baby. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You can cry on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I would... Yeah, sure. Anytime. I'm happy to do it. But yeah, I don't know. I... I've had a journey. I'll say that much. Well, what are you smoking? Uh, what am I smoking? Rainbow belts. Rainbow belts. How do you feel about the rainbow belts? I think it's not as good as Skittles, but very good. I feel like the Skittles is something that's very unique for those that have not smoked it. How would you describe it? Rainbow belts or Skittles? Skittles first. Skittles is. Very, like, a, an explosion of flavor in your mouth. <laughs> Does it taste like a Skittles? Does it yes. taste like the rainbow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it tastes like candy. Um, you have to, like, I don't know. I don't like candy strains, but I like Skittles, if that makes sense to anyone. So, like, I don't know. Most, like, fruity kind of strains I'm not into, but Skittles is such a, like, unique kind of terp that's like so loud that I just, I don't know, I fell in love with it. I was smoking it for probably three or four years straight. I feel like you got the cut actually when a lot of people didn't have the cut in Colorado. Yeah, we went to Cali to get it. <laughs> Shout out Stone Ninja. <laughs> I'll tell the cut or how I got the Skittles cut yes. briefly. Well, first I got an Emerald Cup actually. Um, the I, first ever time. The first ever time I got it, I got an Emerald Cup. It was the most money I ever spent on a clone. And I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was like the Skittles is this like NorCal thing. Like everyone's like, this is fire. And I was like, I've never really seen it. Well, let me go back. I was at the tr the, the Cannabis Cup in Michigan, and uh, Skittles had a booth there, one of their like reps at the time. So then they had a crazy line going and all this shit. And I was like, I got to go check this out. So um, I went to their booth and waited forever to buy an eighth for 60 bucks. Like 60 bucks. Pure custody. I loved it. Every second of it. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> <laughs> then I went back to my booth, cracked open this jar, and I'm like, why are these people freaking out for the Skittles? I looked at it, and my initial thought was like, this is the shittiest weed I've ever seen in my life. It looks like straight fucking mids booth fucking express. It's terrible. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then I grabbed it, and it was soaking fucking wet. Um, 
the, <laughs> so I was just like, I can't even smoke this right now. That was the Michigan people that had it at the time that were selling it, but it was just so fucking wet, literally fresh off the plant. But I was like, yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> so I didn't, <laughs> I was like, I don't understand any of this fucking custy mids nonsense. I was like, I'm fucking losing my grip on this. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I remember throwing it in my, my bag and flying back home and like forgetting about it. And then, I don't know, a, a couple weeks later, it, somehow he opened it and dried it and kind of like let it get to a proper state. And I gave it a second chance. And I remember the first time I hit it and I was like, holy shit. Like now I understand. Mm. Like now I understand. Like I didn't understand at all until I actually got a nice good hit of this flower. And I was like, this shit is fucking like got an extra level of flavor to it. But anyway, that was the first time I ever tried Skittles. But how I actually That's got nice. Skittles, I paid a thousand bucks for it at Emerald Cup one day before ever growing it. Some dude just came up and was like, I got the Skittles. It was like a teen. I was like, oh, fuck it. And I, I thought about it for like two days. He was like, can I leave this in your booth? <laughs> and I was like, fuck. Like, um, and I was like, what are you going to do with that? He's like, I'm going to sell it. And I was like, fuck. And then I think it was like Scentsy Seeds or somebody actually came over. It might have been Simon or somebody. I can't remember who the fuck it was, but it was somebody from Europe that was like, I want to buy that, and uh, I can't remember what he was going to offer it, but I looked at him, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy that. So I snaked it off of him real fast before he did it, and I was like, I'll give you the 1000 bucks. I was like, but you got to get it to, to Colorado. And he did, and I grew up for a, a long time, and I loved it. It was finicky as a bitch, mm. and of course we lost it because it's finicky as a bitch. <sighs> yeah. So it I had to get it back, and the way I got it back in the current cut of skills that we have, I flew to L.A., shout out to Stone Ninja. There was one dispensary that – could be trusted to have the right source. I actually went, shout out First Class Genetics, which is where a lot of breeders get their cuts, if you don't know. That's First awesome. Class Genetics is probably on Instagram right now. I think that's his name, but this dude ships cuts like a motherfucker. He's the man. Don't be telling uh, my customers that. Well, <laughs> sorry. He was the man back in the day. I don't know what he's up to now. If you need some cuts, hit up Jay. Like, my bad. But yeah, uh, I hit him up. And this is why it sucked. I was like, dude, I need like, I want like 50 of those. He's like, nah, dude, I only do one at a time, like thousand bucks. And I was just like, damn. Fuck this noise. I was like, well, where can I get it? And he's like, this dispensary will do it for you. And they, they got the cut from me directly. So if you get it from them, it's like getting it from me. And it's the authentic cut. So I had to track like the source of it. Anyway, I flew to California. I knew that this seed or this clone release, they said they had like 50 to 100. And I'm like, I'm buying them all. Wow. I'm buying them all. So I showed up and I knew that it was going to piss everybody off the line because they've been, people have been waiting for weeks in California to come down and get this clone drop. And they knew it was going to be hyped. Even the guy on the phone told me, he's like, yeah, he's like, First come, first serve. I was like, well, I'll be there first. He's like, I was like, people camp out at your shit or what? He's like, no, nah, no one's ever camped here. I was like, cool. So jumped a flight, slept on the sidewalk in Los Angeles. Oh, my God. In sketchy town, USA. I don't even know what cross-section of streets we were, but it was not cool. I can't believe you're here to tell a story. I actually got like a <laughs> shitty hotel down the street, but I didn't want to risk like not someone snaking me in line. The whole point of this whole mission is to be first in line to buy all the Skittle Scuts. <laughs> so... I was first in line, had my guy Stone Ninja come meet me or whatever, and we go in and buy all the cuts, and yeah, everyone behind me was incredibly pissed, and uh, yeah, that's how I had to reacquire the Skittles, but I slept on a sidewalk for it. That's how much I like it. I mean, that is love. Not just any sidewalk. Some fucking downtown LA fucking sketchy rats the size of cats fucking urban camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> unprepared didn't have shit <laughs> didn't have shit like didn't have a sleeping bag didn't have a tent didn't have a lawn chair laid on the concrete I think that's the most impressive number one in line <laughs> and you bought all the cuts and everyone that showed up that morning for work was like what are you, what's good I was like I'm first in line they're like cool this like, guy's not gonna be here no till one, noon <laughs> it was like no one's ever no one's ever fucking waited in line like this idiot, and I did, and uh, I bought them all. And then the people behind me, I remember, were like, can I just get one off you? I, get, I was like, and I was that dick that day. I was like, no, dude, I need these. I have a hole. <laughs> I'm feeling a hole, and they have to be Skittles. Mm. But yeah, they don't. that's that's my Skittles story. I really like Skittles. It's something I've been smoking for quite a long time. I go in phases of pot, so like for a while, it was started with like sour diesel. Oh, okay. Smoke sour diesel for like four or five years straight, almost exclusively. It's all I the get classic. with sour diesel. Yeah, the classic OG sour. It's just like, I love that shit. That's nice. the reason I started growing pot for the main re for the most part. I was just like, I'm not going to buy $400 ounces of sour. I'm going to grow it. So I got the cut and just grew sour like a motherfucker and smoked it like crazy. Then it became OG Kush. Oh. And like OG Kush was like 
the only thing I would smoke for like four years. The real OG Kush, not like the 27 different fucking names of OG. Just there was one OG Kush back way back in the day. Yes. It was called OG Kush. <laughs> it was only one of them. And I had it and it was awesome and I grew it and I loved it and it was fucking stupid fire. It was like amazing. But I smoked that for like four or five years straight right into like call it like right into my college times. And then I made Bruce Banner. Damn. And Bruce Banner was about four year period where I just smoked that straight. And uh, let's see, what else did I get into? And then I say Skittles is another period. I remember going to like straight just. You yeah. mentioned kosher at one point. Oh yeah, at one point. I, I love kosher. At one point I got on Michael Phelps OG for oh. like two, three years straight. That was after the banner craze. I got onto the Michael Phelps. Then I got onto the kosher. I got on the kosher like 2015 for like four years straight. <laughs> now I'm on the Skittles for like four years straight. So like, yeah, and I literally, I don't know. I, I am like an addictive personality kind of guy. That's why I don't really do drugs. So it's just like when I find something I like, I'm like, let's consume the shit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can definitely second that because I have never seen like all the times that we have discussed like potential runs and strains like I just stopped talking to you about it because he's just like I guess I'll settle for the rainbow belts if the Z's not rooted in time in our facility <laughs> you know this in our facility I always ask everybody I'm like at least put two or three Skittles plants in mm. a room that way there's at least two or three Skittles plants every two weeks that way there's a perpetual harvest of Skittles for Jason to smoke yeah, which is fucked very up. very important. Because Z is my favorite straight, too. And I feel like it's not cool when I'm like, wait, <laughs> are we supposed to split this? <laughs> nope. The Z is for Jason. Okay. Every two weeks on schedule, I need some Z. Well, thank you for sharing that story, too. Because I think when these guys are like, what do you guys care about genetics and stuff? Is Even when you say that you spent a grand is... When you look at that, is like I feel like most breeders, especially because you're the originator of the Bruce Banner, is I feel like you don't. Oftentimes you trade, right? Oftentimes you trade for, even for these high valued strains and things like that. Always, honestly, always is always. Great. I yeah. never pay for cuts, and I don't trying to sound like a dickhead, but in my career or history, I've never paid for cuts. Like I literally, it's always been a trade with somebody. Going back to the forum days, yeah. You just what do you got? Okay, I got this. Like let's swap them, let's trade them, and. Yeah, and then there's a weird thing that happens when you become a breeder yeah. where sometimes, <laughs> I shouldn't say sometimes, a lot of times when you become a breeder, now the cuts are hard to get access to because, because they know, nobody wants you. they look at you as a commercialized motherfucker that's like, oh, you're going to take my baby and fucking spawn it to a million fucking bastards and like, so some of the harder shit gets, like once you do a seed release, and it's like people actively try to keep shit away from you slash give you fake shit so yeah. that you waste your time and like that shit happens for real but it, for the most part it's like the cooler you are to people you know what you put out comes back or whatever so i i don't know i haven't had too much of that issues and honestly with the legalization or commercialization of cannabis like recreation across the, the planet if not you know just america like clones have become way more accessible yeah so like even if there is a cut that I want or maybe somebody doesn't want, there's a price. You just go to any of these shows and pay for the cut. Or I have enough connections and friends and everything else where I can get the cut. But to me, it's more about, particularly in breeding, it's like yeah. I would rather have permission than go behind someone's back, pay a high price for it just to release it. Like that's some copycat shit or something where it's like, let me find the hottest cuts, S1, and put them out. Like yes. that's bullshit. That's so I don't know. What I guess what I'm getting at is, is like in a weird way, the evolution of clones for me were like, totally free and trading and then when I'd have cool shit like we trade that sold clones really cheap out of the shop and then like it got to a point where like people didn't want me to have shit but yeah. then on like the commercialization of cannabis just overgrew that where all of a sudden everything is still available kind of for the most part so but now it's calmed back down again where it's like look everything's out there like a lot of it's trades again kind of thing well, but. how do they trust you? It's like, I think, like you said, is it goes both ways where people hold back from you. But then at the same time, like sometimes I'm sure people have asked you like, oh, well, I guess actually not. People haven't probably asked you. It's people ask me like, how is this the breeder's cut or is this the clone only? And <clears throat> with you is I feel like if you like had that niche for so many years and like that group of like culture and friends is like, yeah. you're probably only running. The cuts get weird too. Because of seeds, like Bruce Banner. Yeah. Like, people pop seeds, find phenos of Bruce Banner, and have a cut of Bruce Banner yes. from seed. 
But the most famous phenotype of Bruce Banner that won the awards is a Bruce Banner number three, a clone only. That so like you got a cut of the Bruce Banner, I instantly think of Bruce Banner three, the clone only cut. Yes. Where it could just as easily mean Bruce Banner cut from a Bruce Banner two point pack that's a fire pheno. You know what I mean? So sometimes yes. things get a little bit confusing with that, but I think to what you're speaking is is like, yeah, we try to obviously source the genetics back to the originators and in any circumstance that we try to use them and also with blessing to kind of do so. That's yeah. sort of the way that we try to handle that. I think that's really good, though, that you touch on that and, like, how you placed it, though, because I think that's something that I see a lot of people get burned bridges and the hurt feelings in this industry is like the guys like cloudy cat just like you said like uh, what a fuck nobody game, support him <laughs> genetics game can be a motherfucker and i mean but i there's a, I, i've spoken to this briefly in the past i guess on my show or whatever but there's a point when i tried to become like a broker for breeders yeah so when we opened our store in colorado our, our grow in colorado and started focusing on doing seeds mm-hmm. and metric i was like okay we're gonna now try to introduce other breeders because the, you know, I'll just say it now. It doesn't matter. The secret to that was pollen does not attract object in the regs. Nobody gives a fuck about pollen. Right. So I could go to a guy like Archive and be like, I need pollen off your face off mail, yeah. and I'm gonna hit it back to you know all of your clone onlys essentially recreate your line out here within Metric and release it. And we actually did that with Archive. It was cool. We That's released huge. a whole whole line of archives, all the all the face off stuff, all the face off BXs and. Oh, we were the Samoas, a bunch of stuff. Denrec, I think, bought those seeds, then won cups with those seeds. That's huge. And that goes credit to Archive. But Archive actually entrusted me with his mail. And if you want to talk about people don't trust each other with, like, clones, yeah. we'll try taking something Pollen. like Archive's face-off mail, which could potentially be worth millions of dollars in the wrong hands. You That's know what true. I mean? And obviously, we papered a deal and shit, and I respect the fuck out of Archive yeah. and Fletch. But, it, you know, he gave us that mail. I held that mail as a male mother or father, if you want to call it, for two and a half years and release C projects with his blessing of, I mean, to recreate archive. We did it for Gorilla Glue. We did it for a bunch of different people. And mm-hmm. I tried to call myself the Dana White of Weed. I had this vision where I was like, I'm going to sign the best talent and release it in this market <laughs> and we're going to do all this shit. Like, Very cool. that all completely blew up in my face because it's like herding cats. But at the same time, trust is paramount to all of that. And my thought was, these breeders never trust these dispensary owners right? right because they're like fuck these guys they just want these genetics or it's always a chat or a suit or some dick yes. i was like when i come to these breeders it would be like i'm already a breeder i already have like a hit strain in bruce banner three like i'm not really trying to like i know the the business of breeding and what comes of it so when i ask you to release through me i'm a source that can be trusted yeah because i'm actually a breeder not a fucking chad owner and I did get a lot of breeders to sign with us because it was me in control of those releases. Mm-hmm. It, like in Colorado specifically is what I'm talking about. Yeah, but Colorado at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were one of the, like, you got into this game so young into it and even before the recreational side that when you look at that time frame, though, is majority of the United States was still illegal or it didn't, it wasn't recreational, it wasn't medical. You couldn't get store, like you couldn't go to the store and go pick up some seats real quick or go online like that. Do you see, like, I think that that's the thing that a lot of people... I remember, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just thought of this. I remember my first store, Delta 9 on Broadway, one of the first stores in Denver, Colorado. Dang. uh, Like, selling seeds was like a new idea. And Mm. I hadn't made seeds at this point. Well, actually, I take that back. I had made Bruce Banner, so I knew about seeds. But I hadn't sold seeds. I didn't think of selling seeds. I had only thought of creating genetics. Yeah. in house because it was all illegal and private, and I did it in a crawl space and like. And you probably wanted the genetics, like the actual plant, to come from it. Yeah, exactly, and that was the the mission. Like we were trying to create something better and new. But my point of that was, is when we started Delta Nine on Broadway, um, I remember calling Swerve for oh, the first time, and this awesome. is at the height of Swerve. Not that like he was, you know, hard to get a hold of and everything else. We had to use like hush mail or some proton <laughs> mail or some bullshit and go back and forth. It's like. Like, you might be communicating on the dark web today is kind of what it felt like then, but I had to get a hold of Swerve, and I was like, I want to sell your seeds in Colorado at this dispensary. And his minimum order was, like, five grand. And at that time, I was like, like, but he was selling, like, white fire OG and shit, I think was mm. the strain at the time. And it was just fucking $400 a pack, like, burning everything five. down. If you, if you could get them, you could move them. You know what I mean? That was the first con- time I thought about, like, buying wholesale and putting them in a store. Oh. So we started loading up the store back then with seeds, 
is one of the first stores to ever do it. And Cali, you got Swerve from Cali, like bringing Just, the I was heat. so, I was very, you know, I lo- obviously looked up to Swerve at the time because, like, I, I mean, I still do, but I was looking up to Swerve, like, this guy is like a seed breeder with all these strains. He's this big Cali fucking guy. I was like, yeah. I'm starting a dispensary in Colorado. Like, I don't, you know, he was ahead of me. And I was just like, let me see if I can get him to sell seeds here. It was kind of crazy. And then shortly after that, I remember Adam Dunn came to town. Mm. And when Adam came to town, TH Seeds started getting released into the marketplace. And like that happened. And then uh, there was like um, Mountain Selects or something else came to town. But there was about three different breeders like sort of showed up, started releasing seeds. And it sort of immediately triggered into my thought of like early genetics because at before all of that, yeah, everything was in the mail. Still, a lot of it is, but yeah. it was in the mail from Europe. Wow! And it's such a back ass words concept if you think about it, because a lot of times, like if I wanted to buy something from like Cali Connection or in, just someone from a Cali breeder, yes, ca- he would have to then smuggle it essentially to Europe. A lot of times, because you couldn't, it was hard to like get shit into Europe. So a lot of guys actually flew them there. I'm not going to talk too much in detail about this, but the guys would fly them there, meet the distributor there. Oh, okay. And then get the seeds to Europe. Then the seeds would be sold in coffee shops, Amsterdam, online, all this other stuff in Europe, and Americans would fly over there to get them. And bring And them then back. fly all the way back to, like, California. Yeah, it'd be stressful. So though. you think about the seed actually traveled, like, all the way over to fucking Amsterdam, and then all the way back to America, and half of them were in bubble mailers or in CD cases or in DVD cases and weird shit, and half of them got intercepted, and it was just like such a back asswards way for Americans to purchase seeds. There well, wasn't even a- money, like you're saying, like compared to now, like we have Venmo and all this shit, but it's like even money, like you were sending it cash, you get cash, hoping all cash, <laughs> hoping a prayer. You couldn't buy the seed you actually wanted to buy. You had to fill out a catalog, and you'd put like your top four selections, wow. and pray they send you something close to what you asked for. That's the way we used to order seeds. It was fucking crazy. And then, like, there literally was no American seed bank. It was not a thing that happened. So everything would come from over there. And then there was this transition where medical started happening, American seed banks started happening, and then we didn't have to send our seeds to Europe to get them back. But I don't know. There's a, like I said, there's a whole story there, too, where a lot of the seeds that were produced were from, like, the Dutch for the longest. Mm. All the early cannabis cups, all those early strains were really produced over there. And then there became this kind of Americanized takeover of cannabis for the last, like, 10 or 20 years Mm -hmm. where a lot of, like, those old Dutch strains kind of went away and you even started seeing the European companies. If you've ever been to Spanibus, you'll see that a lot of the European companies imitate American stuff to sell to the European market. So they're trying to look American. But I predict a full reversal of that again because I think that now you're going to want to see some of those more classic Dutch strains that a lot of work went into will kind of become rare or wanted again as opposed to like some of the American stuff that is, I don't know, there's a lot of American breeders. There wasn't that many European breeders. It's like 12. There's fucking 12,000 American breeders right now. (laughs) They're really, I'm so grateful that you touched on all those points because I don't think, I think like even metric is like, this is a weird thing that I don't know if people actually understand what metric really is, is I know it was developed in the early nineties for like pharmaceutical counting of pills and things like that. But we actually have to use that as our tracking system. The states vote in biotrack or metric when they go rec or whatever moving forward, they actually It's a whole political bullshit. But I think for those that don't know what metric is, though, is like there would be a huge fine. Like, okay, if if you dropped like let's just like Bruce Banner is like if our dispensary, for instance, I guess this wouldn't work. But I don't know. It's hypothetically is if our dispensary went through and magically came up with Bruce Banner when it was like super on the DL and like hadn't been sold anywhere yet. And we just magically popped up with this strain and the MED caught wind of it, they'd be like, how did you guys get this strain? And we'd be like... I'll tell well, this little yeah. story of that. Like, it's not necessarily <laughs> metric specific, but I don't have a problem telling this story. I went to fucking Puerto Rico to do a consultation. <laughs> it was just like it was straight up a consult. I went to Puerto Rico, flew that. Never been to Puerto Rico. I don't know shit about Puerto Rico. I fly into Puerto Rico, and we go to the hotel, and the very first thing we do is go to this dispensary and meet the guy. And the guy's like telling me, like, don't... Don't worry if you ever get in any trouble out here. He's like, just tell me you don't speak Spanish. He's like, most of the time they'll just let you go. And I was like, okay, this sounds really weird out here, but I was like, 
either way, I had this contract. We signed it, all this other shit. Long story short, we go up to some national park place and end up getting arrested for having a joint. No. I, I didn't have the joint. Someone else had the joint. So I'm handcuffed by a national park guy who's from Eugene, Oregon, speaks perfectly clear English. <laughs> and he's from Oregon. Yeah. He's definitely familiar Running with my weed. background. He knows my strains. <laughs> he knows all of my shit. He know, like, know, almost knows who I am, I swear to God. He fucking reads all my documents and shit. And he's like, oh, you're doing some consulting here. You do, you do a little breeding work, huh? And all this shit. He then calls in um, like every department that you could think of from fucking DEA to... Fucking border patrol, immigration, fucking seed, fucking agricultural check, immigration, like everybody. No one, no one gave a fuck. They took pictures of all of my documents, all this other shit. Anyway, we were there to potentially do a breeding project collaboration with the Puerto Rican dispensary and okay. release a strain. So I leave. I don't think too much of it because I don't really give a fuck. I'm a career cannabis person. Like I tell the cops, I fu- this is what I fucking do. I've what I've done for 20 fucking years. When I come into like the country, I don't give a fuck. Like. <laughs> It's, I'm a weed guy for the most part. I'm, I don't know. If I, I'm not an idiot. I'll try to, I don't know, at the border, I'll try to not exactly say what I am. But anyway, um, yeah, like I say, I leave. The strain is then released in Puerto Rico. And we, on the very first Instagram post of this strain, Randy Savage, that we made it, we did a, a Randy Savage fucking elbow drop like post or whatever on Puerto Rico. The dispensary in Puerto Rico put it up the very, within like eight hours, they were like bombarded by like the health department. Oh my gosh. And the health department closed them down for like three days saying that their facility was too dirty and it really wasn't. They just found like a dirty Tyvek suit. So they were just like pulling some bullshit Fighting. to shut them down for a minute. And then they had all these issues with how the fuck did you have Randy's Savage strain? How was this made? This is a dark horse strain. Like how did dark horse release a strain with you? Why is this strain here? They crawled straight up his ass wow. about like how did this strain get here? And I just think that's kind of crazy because at the exact same fucking time, you know, Cookies was opening up like a mega fucking store on the beach down the road with like Gary Payton and all this other bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like Having I bring, no in, problems. bring in one fucking strain. <laughs> I smoke one fucking joint. I meet one federal fucking officer. One Instagram post. How terrifying. The whole thing is like fucking shut down. So it's like we canceled the whole contract, left all that shit. I don't really plan to go back to Puerto Rico. Like, it. it I mean... It's fine, but that's the weird thing about it is, is like, you want to talk about metric, like, that's a whole other fucking show. That's what I think. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like I say, like, metric is a thing where they get 35 cents, I think, per plant tag and 35 cents per package tag. So it's the hidden billionaire of the pot industry. They're almost... In every single state that is now legal, or and it's a, mandatory. They get forty dollars a license, so like most, you know, we're like paying them like two forty a month plus thirty cents a package tag plus thirty cents a plant tag. So every plant I grow, I give them metric thirty five cents. Every package that I create from the plants, so when I chop it up into like eights and pre packed jars and all this shit, we make packages and pounds out of it. They have to put a package tag on that, which is thirty five cents each time plus the monthly overhead fee. And it doesn't sound like a lot. You're like, oh, you got to throw 35 cents on now all these these package tags. Think about it in every plant grown in America. 35 it, cents a plant. And every plant. Like, there's a lot of plants that you end up killing. Like, I'm just saying natural selection. Every tag, like every, tag, every plant over like 10 inches or 15 inches out here, wherever your the local regs are in the area, it's like, but it, it equates to millions so and millions of dollars well and then they can find you so that's the thing too is like not only can you lose your badge or like the privilege to work in the industry is like they'll find you if you have these tags in the dirt or like your medium where they have to like lift it up to read the number is like for the first time we had one of these people come in with the guns and they scanned our rooms and they were like it's all our fid so they would scan the rooms and then they'd like say okay you have x number of plants in here but one plant in here is showing on your metric that it's actually in the room, in this in the vegetative room, and it's actually in this room. So you need to go in your computer system and move that one plant over here to there. And it wasn't like terrible or anything. It was like mm-hmm. okay, like there was a minor error in this metric. You switch that over. It's kind of cool to see them do that. But at the same time, they could also scan the entire safe room, and like see your inventory and all this other stuff. It was kind of a, it was cool experience to watch all the shit work. But at the same time, I was just like, this is fucking kind of crazy. The way that this is done and regulated, and like I th- like you said, I think you said it comes from like the, the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry. So it's ninety two. It's 
it's basically for tracking. Of course, it comes from Florida. <laughs> yeah. It's all about pill tracking. Yeah, exactly. And it comes from Florida. And somehow they've won all of these contracts all over the fucking place. There's actually, I was reading about it. I don't know the current mm. state of this, but I believe it was in Washington or Oregon where the state mandated them to update some shit in the metric. Like there's, they had to make some changes within metric for state law. Oh. And metric had a certain period of time to make the updates within the system. And they just didn't do it. They just like skipped. So now... This is what I read. I can't confirm this, but uh, now metric is frozen in Washington. It was as of like last week. It was just frozen because the, the state said no, you can't do anything without these new implement implementations. Wow. Metric didn't do the updates, so all product was frozen, and it, everyone threw their hands up in the air. And they're just looking at metric like, what the fuck are you going? When are you going to get the updates done? And they said like could be weeks. And it's like what? Yeah. So I have no love for metric. <laughs> no, it's at hard all. To. And just as the the general software that it is Ooh. i don't i don't even know if i should be whistleblowing this too much or whatever but it's really stupid it's so bad it's really stupid the way that they actually track shit or like when you tell someone seed to sale tracking you think like a okay barcode. yeah okay they throw a barcode on every plant and they track it all the way through and shit it's like it is nothing fucking like that you could go into these metric things and like you literally fucking change names of shit they're cool with you changing names of shit <laughs> yeah, that but, should never happen but you're not allowed to so like they'll give you the option to like what you're saying in the, wait in their training i mean it's been a minute so i'm in training disclaimer I'm, i don't do metric <laughs> i don't do metric but i've been around for a long fucking time and i had to go through a training like some years ago i watched a training video on youtube where these motherfuckers told me we encourage you to change the name of strains that way you can have a house strain and it'd be named your dispensary strain and That's like go true. ahead and change it in metric and shit in there. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then like, they said you can't do it. That's what this funny is. They released it just like you're saying, like use this tool. We gave you this tool to do pheno hunts and like customize things. And You can change anything, anytime. <laughs> you can, I have, we had a metric person come down because we had an issue in our metric, uh -huh. a general typo. You, you'll know this is a typo because I believe it said... We had a harvest batch in like 2029. Yeah. And they're like, uh, we think you might have messed this up. And we looked at it and it was so fucking old. It was from 2019. And it was like, oh, clearly there was a two instead of a one entered there. I was like, why does your software allow me to fucking harvest batches 20 years into the future? <laughs> Doesn't flag anything. Like, no one fuck. It's it like, what in the actual fuck is happening? Or better yet, like, can I go back 20 years and just amend all my shit? Because it kind of allows you to do that shit too. So, what is it actually fucking doing other than taxing the fuck out of every plant, oh. package tag, patient, person? This is medical. This is rec. <laughs> fucking okay. every and then the flags. license. The flags, just like you're saying them. The flags. Like if you if you try to edit some things, like say you go through and you realize you wrote the wrong year down and you're like, okay, I'm going to go back and change this. You just change it. And <laughs> Or but, what about the manifest? Let's talk about manifest for just a minute. This is fucking hilarious. Like. Remember when the manifests were like the biggest deal in the world? It was like turn-by-turn like, turn, turn directions of what time you're going to be where. And you had like a only certain time period. You had period. to print in Google Map Quest or whatever the fuck it was with turn-by-turn. Turn, yep. Print it with your the manifest, license staple plate, it, all that shit. Driver's license. Give it to them so you could transport cannabis around town. And if you got pulled over, you wouldn't get busted or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Some lawyer figured out. All legal routes. Three words. You just write all legal routes means I'll drive on all legal roads. Done. Done. Period. It's just like, it's and they gave you this huge box. Started with this like serious, serious like tracking. Like you're, like you're delivering a nuclear bomb. Like you, you got to know place. what street and what time and where you're going to be. So and it bullshit. ended at the point where it's like, just write all legal roads. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> and then they make you sign it and like double sign it and double draft. So then you got to keep these files on file for seven years though like just in your grow real quick like like every time you ever sent anything out of here you better have fucking <laughs> yeah. two times two yeah well okay I wait i want to touch because you saved the day with this this is why this is so innovative of what you were trying to do with using that license bringing this group of people to together honestly adam dunn these are huge names archive like huge seed banks like that was all a long, long, long <laughs> fucking time ago. But yeah, I feel like it was a failed project too. Happy to admit, <laughs> completely failed. Like I don't know, we were the number one seed seller in metric. Probably still are to this day. That's pretty bad. We used to move a lot of fucking seeds in metric. That's another thing we could talk about. The med just changed another rule. <laughs> it just said, "Hey, dark horse, fuck you, rule." 
Not that I'm, you know, I'm actually for the rule, to be honest, to be clear, I'm for the rule, but I've made a business out of being a metric seed seller, the number one seller of metric seeds, produce seeds in metric and sell them in metric. And then Colorado was like, hey, we got a new rule. Uh, We don't give a fuck where you get your seeds from anywhere, get them from anywhere, and we don't give a fuck where you get your clones from. Get Happy those 2024. From anywhere. The, the rule, little, I've tried to remember what it was. Is like any any licensed <laughs> any licensed producer outside of the state it was like, what? Okay, that's strange. Cross state line stuff is what you say is allowed. And then it said like anybody with a red badge it was like, okay, so anybody or not even sorry, anybody with a badge. Why? Are you... Anybody with a badge. So if you have a badge, you're allowed to bring seeds and fucking clones and shit in. Then it said, like, oh, or any other licensed metric person or some shit. So as, as the guy that used to be the number one seed seller metric, and everybody that would start their business would call us to get seeds to start their whole thing up, and we'd push a lot of seeds, and we'd work with a lot of breeders and release a lot of shit in metric, respecting the rules of metric. The rules. Building businesses around this it. This is law. And they were like, oh, yeah, fuck all of that. Um, <laughs> because they knew everyone was immaculately conceptioning all this shit, and I'm for, like... Why, why, why should we even do that bullshit? Like, let's just allow people to bring genetics in when they need to bring genetics in. That's, I'm fine with it. I think it's a better fucking play. But at the same time, like, you know, that was a niche that we fucking did pretty well with for a long time. But we just gotta do better. Adapt and survive. That's the way this game works. And there's pivots. I've made 9,000 pivots. That's why I think that we should do a show like ASAP on like actually covering. The whole journey, because I don't think people realize, like, even, like, I won't go down the path, but, like, even, like, relationships, like, Adams that, like, has shifted from, like, now to then. And, like, when all these, like, it's weird, but watching Swerve with Cali Connection and, like, all these, like, long-term guys, Scott from Rare Dankness, like, all, all these guys have, like, these little, like, riffs throughout time of, like, shenanigans with, like, other breeders or other, like, stuff going on. And I feel like it's because... It used to be such a small thing like that, like exactly what you're touching on. Like there was only <laughs> these people doing this. I'll just say it like this. Like I used to read High Times magazine like it was a porno. <laughs> like I would sneak it. My parents would never allow me to have a high time. So I literally yeah. was like a sneak. Like I'd run off like under the covers with a fucking like magnifying glass or a fuck flashlight. And I'm looking at pictures of centerfolds of weed. Like, that's what I'm doing, and I'm staring at it, and I'm reading about all this shit and all these breeders in Amsterdam and, like, these breeders that go over here to basically, like, make seeds and do this shit. And I was just like, man, wouldn't it be the coolest life in the world if you could become a breeder and, like, go to Amsterdam and, like, live there and make seeds and be legal? You don't ever have to worry about getting busted or any of that shit. This is when I was, like, young, you know? And then my dreams came true up the street, like, I've, I was from uh, Castle Rock, Colorado, up in Denver, Colorado. I mean, it's all Colorado, but up in Denver, basically, it was when, like, all popping. of this popped off. Like, a lot, I mean, shout out to California. They were, the, the medical, like, did it long before Colorado, but, like, yeah. when Colorado exploded, like, shit exploded. Yeah. And, like, all of a sudden, a lot of my favorite breeders and people I've been reading about and all this shit, like, I was, like, all these people started coming to town. Same. Like, I had, I opened a dispensary, my dream, I was smoking weed, Without being scared to get arrested, I got a medical card. I was just totally like, I am living my boyhood dream right now. Like, I am pinching myself. I have a storefront over here. Like, check this shit out. I got 420 nurses. We smoke weed in the back and play video games. I was like, this is the coolest thing that will ever happen. And it fucking was. And then all these other people started coming to town. Basically, all my heroes moved to Denver. Not like all, but a fuck ton of them. Like, everybody came through at some point. I was going to say, even traveling in the cups and everybody all Everybody came yeah. through at some point. So I got to, like, hobnob with these people that I've only <laughs> read about. You know what I mean? So cool. And the truth is, is, like, what the legend says is, like, you don't always want to meet your heroes because sometimes they're fucking assholes and shit. You know what I mean? And, like, but that's all right. Like, I had to <laughs> learn. Like, I had to learn. And I also never put myself in a category. I still don't of any of these people. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm still... I'm like mentored by this or I see this shit and I still look up to all this shit. But I laugh because you kind of talk about like over the years. Yeah. Over the years, all of us eventually just turn gray. Some of us a little older than others, but all, all of us just turn gray, kind of mellowed a little bit, yeah. I feel like. And there's a weird thing about being a breeder is there's no retirement for being a breeder. I've never seen I a breeder. That. Never seen a breeder. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I've seen breeders retire. I'm sure there are people in chat like, 
these jinx or thug pug or somebody, you know, some of these people have like retired or whatever, but truly like somebody like bog or something like mm. people breed to the day they die. If you're a breeder, you're a breeder at like, if you're a true breeder, you'll breed to the day you die. And I also look at it in a way it's like, there's no 401ks for us. There's no royalties. Wow. This isn't the music business. You know, even though we have hit strains, yeah, doesn't mean I'm going to be paid for life on those hit strains. It just means it's like, imagine the music business, but there's absolutely no royalties. You better just come up with the next hit and the next hit. And you have to pay for the branding and marketing of yourself to even build that hype. And it's not like the people using these things after that ever had to pay for these expenses yeah. or ever had to invest. Same as the music business, though, with like yeah, imps or rappers that. or whatever sampling a bunch of old classic hits and shit and then just throwing their shitty mumble rap all over like classic beats or whatever. It's just like, such a perfect it's, it's the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know. That's why I said I just think I kind of laugh about it. I was like, the career path that I chose. And I don't even look at being a breeder as necessarily a career path, but the, that as a career path has no end. Yeah. There is no end. There is no like, I'm selling Dark Horse. People will buy it because I'm the guy making the selections. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you might be able to sell Dark Horse to grow or Dark Horse to dispensary or MIP Lab or whatever the fuck it may be. Yes. But you can sell your collection off to somebody, some fucking group of people or whatever it may be. But really, I don't think that you can really sell your your seed company like you are who you are like that's like saying i don't fucking know like well, you make me think of scott like, rapper selling their like their i don't gallagher gallagher <laughs> sold his act to his twin brother you know what i mean like i don't know you can pull this shit off <laughs> i love that that's the perfect comparison but i think that that's like I don't know. I think that that's what you strive for in a weird way is to like see these people thrive to like or, or strive to use your strains and like want to smoke them and like want to use them for breeding projects. But I think it's got to be like a like love hate relationship. Like truly. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it's the biggest compliment in the world. It truly is. That's nice. Sometimes it gets a little bit like gross when like things like get egregious. Copycat. <laughs> like, like yeah, like copycat <laughs> shit. It's like it gets a little bit gross, but other times it's just like. When you see someone using your work and their work, it's like they see something in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the same way that I am. Like if you see me using somebody's stuff, I just means like I like their stuff or I like what I found. Like I found something fire here and give the credit to where we found the pack or whatever. I love that though. Like proper credibility instead of like taking and renaming somebody's strain and then calling it your own like back cross or your own like whatever. Is like I think that there that happens like a lot though. And I think even I don't know. We'll talk about this another day. But... I was like, that's an eight-hour podcast. Yeah, I was, was going to say, yeah, I'll go too uh, far with this. <laughs> touched on six vague topics, or vaguely touched on six topics, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You going to wrap it up on a quick one? I think we're going to wrap it up tonight because I feel like... Okay, actually, today, I have good news. Don't tell Jason. Is I feel like... So I want everybody to know I went in on a Sunday fun day because I fucked up and didn't finish harvesting our room on Friday. And so I was like, I'm going to go harvest our room today. And the good part was, is we got to run all of these cuts that even Jason, we have not ran for years of like the forum cut, the Girl Scout cookies, the Thin Mints, like just shit that we have not we've had in the past for sure but it's like this time like we had this whole plethora of older strains and they just stacked so fucking nice <laughs> and when i was pulling down the room i was just like so excited because i have to give you props that jason has expanded and switched to so many different like options that i never thought he would be open to of like rock wool and using the treat salt mix and IPM, and to see this harvest this time though, I feel like the whole team put so much love into this room, and guys, I'm stoked to show you the flower. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm, I've seen it, it's fire. It really did yield pretty well too. That's, what, that's what's making me, we've used the same setup for a little while, and then we, but now we've thrown in some older strains, and to watch these strains hit, oh. shitting on all this new genetic stuff. I know some of this new stuff is just like amazing flavor, but you forget what like baseball bats of weed look like sometimes. You're like, holy fuck, dude. And they're like, this thing is, this is how you yield cannabis. Like, it's not this fucking pinky finger size fucking 
cherry fucking fire gelato nugget. Like that's what we had a friend come in the grow, and he was like, "Dude, you guys aren't running CO 2 He's like, "This has got to be the biggest shit I've ever seen without mm. CO 2 I was like, oh, "Look at." I feel like I guess this is from the room before, but this was actually the Thin Mints as well, though. And, or no, sorry, this is the forum cut. Is I think. I could be mixing this all up now that I say this, but <laughs> they. I feel like, yeah, you should try it, but. <laughs> just, I'm just glad you didn't make me smoke that blunt this whole time. Didn't even pass it once. I wasn't even gonna ask. I you. was gonna say something about you constantly putting your elbow in the weed piles of weed, but I thought it'd be funnier if I didn't. I thought it was really classy, <laughs> just knocking it around. Should we go to dinner? <laughs> yeah, is okay. Everybody. Thank you. I'm stealing Jayla. I know she usually goes till 1030 at night or whatever the fuck. But uh, tonight, everybody, you guys have to go to bed early because uh, we're going to dinner. Peace. Hit, right. the, hit the outro music. All Peace. right. Peace and love, guys. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>